Welcome to Smyrna Christian Church, where the entire Word of God is taught straight from the Bible. Good evening. Welcome back to Smyrna Christian Church, back in the book of Psalms, picking up in chapter 90 this evening. We're beginning the fourth section of the book of Psalms. Now we're getting into the Numbers book section of Psalms. Remember, we talked about it a great deal, that the book of Psalms is split up into five parts, each part um, lining up with one of the first five books of the Bible. And so now we come to chapters 90 through 106, corresponds to the Numbers book. Now, the book of Numbers, what is the actual name of the book of Numbers in the Hebrew? It's Bab Midbar, and it means in the wilderness. So a great deal of the book of Numbers had to do with how the 12 tribes of Israel, how they were in the wilderness. And you know they were in there for those 40 years but they just kept complaining. They kept going against God. And so it wasn't good for them. All of them that were over 20 years old when the numbering was set, they died in the wilderness. They tempted God 10 times, like you see in Numbers chapter 14. And so it, it was not good. You never want to be like they were being to our Heavenly Father. When God brought manna down from heaven, He brought water out of the rock. He provided for them every step of the way, but they didn't trust Him. They were not appreciative of all that He had done for them. And you see uh, some things that happened, a lot of things that happened during that time. You read about them in 1 Corinthians chapter 10. And you know what it says there? It says, these things happen so we learn from them, so we don't lust after evil things. And also it happened as an example for a warning to those upon whom the ends of the world shall come. So those things are prophetic types to teach us. Now we come to this chapter 90. It's a prayer of Moses, so that's really cool. And um, we're going to see in this chapter, it, it, a lot of it is similar to Ecclesiastes chapter 12. And it's, it's about a great deal about how um, our flesh is weak. And this life in the flesh is such a short amount of time. So do your best to serve God. And you know from Romans chapter 8, verses 17 through 18, if, uh, if you suffer with Christ, then you will be a partaker with Him. And it says that the sufferings of this present world are not even compared to the glory that will be revealed in you. So remain strong, stick with our Heavenly Father. He is with you. He will never leave you. He will never forsake you, like you see in Hebrews chapter 13. So let's get into it. Let's ask a word of wisdom from our Father. Yahweh, Heavenly Father, we thank you so much for your word. In this place you've given us, we can teach your word. We ask you to guide us through this study with your Holy Spirit. We ask you to give us eyes to see and ears to hear, to understand and teach your word. We ask that your words be spoken and your will be done during this study. Thank you, and we love you so much, Father. In Yeshua, Jesus Christ, precious name, amen. All right, we pick it up, Psalms chapter 90. As I mentioned, we have a superscription or a title, A Prayer of Moses, the Man of God. And uh, Moses is also called a man of God in Deuteronomy chapter 33, verse 1, Joshua chapter 14, verse 6. In Ezra chapter 3, verse 2. So let's get into it. And the, how the book of Psalms is split up into those five parts, that's all laid out for you in your companion Bible in a fantastic way. So chapter 90, verse 1, and it reads, Lord, Thou hast been our dwelling place in all generations. God is always there for you. We talked a great deal in the Leviticus section of the book of Psalms that we just finished, how God is our sanctuary. He is a refuge for you in any type of trouble, any time, any place. You have that sanctuary with Almighty God. And that doesn't mean you have to be in a literal building. And yes, buildings can serve as a sanctuary. But the true sanctuary is to be in good standing with our Heavenly Father Himself. And He will protect you. If God be for us, who can be against us? Like you also see in that Romans chapter 8, where you also learn a great deal about God's elect in that chapter. Verse 2. Before the mountains were brought forth, or ever thou hadst formed the earth and the world, from everlasting to everlasting, 
Thou art God. God has always been. Of course, before He ever even created a mountain, before He created the earth, God has always been. This is similar to what you read in Proverbs chapter 8 where wisdom speaks in that chapter. And you can really pick it up from the very beginning of the chapter, but especially if you wanted to pick it up in verse 22 of Proverbs chapter 8. It speaks about how wisdom was with God before He ever created a, a single atom, a single tiny particle of dust. Wisdom was with God. Well, why? Because God created wisdom. And you see in Proverbs chapter 1, verse 7, that the beginning of knowledge is the fear, meaning the reverence of the Lord. But fools despise wisdom and instruction. But we're going to see in this chapter how, like I mentioned, we are so weak in this flesh, and in such a short amount of time in this flesh, well, that's the exact opposite of Almighty God. He is eternal, He always has been, He always will be, and He is omnipotent, the all-powerful, the Creator. Verse 3, Thou turnest man to destruction, and sayest, Return, ye children of men. This is speaking of when your flesh body dies. You see in Ecclesiastes chapter 12, verse 7, when your flesh body dies, your flesh returns to the dirt. And that's what this is saying here. Return, ye children of men. Your flesh returns to the dust. But as you see in Ecclesiastes 12, and we're going to even see later in this chapter, when your flesh body dies, your spirit returns to Almighty God. And this takes us all the way back to Genesis chapter 3. After the sin in the garden, Genesis chapter 3, verse 19 says... And this is God speaking to Adam. In the sweat of thy face thou shalt eat bread, till thou return unto the ground. For out of it wast thou taken, for dust thou art, and unto dust thou shalt return. But once again, the Spirit returns to God when your flesh body dies. 1 Corinthians chapter 15 teaches us all about how we have two bodies, a flesh body and a spiritual body. Verse 4. For a thousand years in thy sight are but as yesterday when it is past, and as a watch in the night. A watch in the night is just a few hours. And this reminds you of 2 Peter chapter 3, verse 8. One day with the Lord is as a thousand years, and a thousand years as one day. I mean, that's how God, it, His understanding, His wisdom, and His eternal, it's beyond our understanding. I mean, how can we understand that He can hear everybody's thoughts all at one time? He can see everything that's happening in the whole entire world. Not only He can, but He does see everything that's happening in the entire world all at one time. Almighty God, all-powerful, omniscient. We'll learn about that quite a bit when we get to chapter 139 of the book of Psalms. But a thousand years is just like, like a day to God. Verse 5, Thou carriest them away as with a flood. They are as a sleep. I mean, a thousand years is just like a sleep in the night to Almighty God. Of course, He doesn't sleep. But when we sleep, pretty much as soon as you go to sleep, next thing you know, you're waking up. Well, that's how a thousand is to Almighty God. A thousand years. It's that fast to Him. That's how powerful He is. Continuing verse 5, in the morning they are like grass which groweth up. Again, goes right into verse 6. In the morning it flourisheth and groweth up. In the evening it is cut down and withereth. I mean, it is, when, the, when 1,000 years is over or one generation or however long you want to go with, when that's over, a, a new generation, a new thousand years rises up. And it's new, it's fresh in the beginning. But that time's going to come to an end. And it's going to be cut down like the grass. It withers. Because flesh is not forever. Flesh is just such a very short amount of time. Now this connects us to 1 Peter chapter 1. I want to go there and read some scriptures that are so beautiful. When this teaches us so much about just don't get caught up in the flesh. Yeah, life is hard sometimes. We go through some rough spots, but it's such an insignificant amount of time compared to the eternity. Do your very best to serve Almighty God, and you will be so greatly rewarded. 
Now let's go 1 Peter chapter 1, picking it up in verse 13. And it reads, Wherefore, gird up the loins of your mind, be sober, and hope to the end for the grace that is to be brought unto you at the revelation of Jesus Christ. As obedient children, not fashioning yourselves according to the former lusts in your ignorance, but as He which hath called you is holy, so be ye holy in all manner of conversation. That's all manner of behavior. Do your very best to be pleasing to God every second, but we all sin at times. We all fall short, but do your very, very best. Remember 1 John chapter 1, verse 16, Because it is written, Be ye holy, for I am holy. That's Leviticus chapter 11, verse 44. Verse 17, And if ye call on the Father, who without respect of persons, that means he does not show partiality or favoritism, without respect of persons, judgeth according to every man's work, past the time of your sojourning here in fear. While you're here in this flesh body, reverence God. Do your very best to be pleasing to Him every second. And you better know that if you want to go the way of evil, then yeah, then you better fear God. Because it's not going to be good for you. Just like it wasn't good for those who tempted God ten times. Verse 18. For as much as ye know that you were not redeemed with corruptible things, as silver and gold... From your vain conversation received by tradition from your fathers. You know from Mark chapter 7 verse 13. Traditions of men make the word of God of none effect. If it's not out of the Bible, don't believe it. 19. But with the precious blood of Christ, as of a lamb without blemish and without spot, he had no sin. He became the perfect sacrifice. Verse 20 who verily was foreordained before the foundation of the world. Christ has always been, just like the Father has always been, because Jesus Christ is God. You learn a great deal about that in Colossians chapter 1. But was manifest in these last times for you. Verse 21, Who by Him do believe in God, by Christ, that raised Him up from the dead and gave Him glory that your faith and hope might be in God. Romans chapter 10, verse 17, Faith comes by hearing, and hearing by the word of God. 22, Seeing you have purified your souls in obeying the truth through the Spirit, unto unfeigned love of the brethren, see that you love one another with a pure heart fervently. Fervently, that means intently, the very best that you can. You be good to others. Be compassionate. Remember when they asked Jesus Christ, and they asked Him in Matthew chapter 22, verse 36 through 38, said, what's the great commandment? Christ said, first, love Almighty God with all your heart and all your soul and all your mind. That's number one. But then what's, what's the second thing? He says, you, you love others as you love yourself. You be good to others. Verse 23. Being born again, not of corruptible seed, but of incorruptible, by the word of God, which liveth and abideth forever. Now you'll see this verse 24 and 25. This is the main connection to what we just read in Psalms. Verse 24. Um, For all flesh is as grass... And all the glory of man as the flower of grass. The grass withereth, and the flower thereof falleth away. But the word of the Lord endureth forever. And this is the word which by the gospel is preached unto you. So you know when you're studying this word, you're never wasting time. You are learning, you are growing in the word of God. So you can be pleasing to Him, and you can bring others to Jesus Christ. Now, on our way back to Psalms, I want to stop one more place. Colossians chapter 1. If you're going backwards, you got Titus, then Timothy, then Thessalonians, uh, then Colossians. We're just going to read about four verses or five verses here. 
Colossians chapter 3, verse 12, and it reads, Put on, therefore, as the elect of God, holy and beloved, bowels of mercies, kindness, humbleness of mind, meekness, long-suffering, be patient, be humble, be kind. Verse 13, forbearing one another. That word forbearing, it means to put up with. Be good to others. Be compassionate. Be compassionate of what they might be going through. And be good to them. Forbearing one another and forgiving one another. If any man have a quarrel against any, even as Christ forgave you, so also do ye. And above all these things, put on charity, that's love, which is the bond of perfection. And let the peace of God rule in your hearts, to the which also ye are called in one body, and be ye thankful. Let's go one more verse, 16. Let the word of Christ dwell in you richly in all wisdom, in every aspect of your life. Remember the wisdom that you learned from Almighty God and His Word, and you apply it to your life. Teaching and admonishing, that's warning one another in psalms and hymns and spiritual songs, singing with grace in your hearts to the Lord. Let's go one more. Verse 17. And whatsoever you do in word or deed, do all in the name of the Lord Jesus, giving thanks to God and the Father by Him. There is so much to be thankful for. Never take for granted how blessed you are if you have understanding of God's Word. You have that hunger for it. So many people don't even care. But when you seek, you will find. And every day is a day to rejoice when you have Almighty God and His Word. As we're about to go into even more in this Psalm chapter 90, this life in the flesh is so short, but the eternity is eternal. With God, it never ends. You remember that next time you're having a hard day. This life's going to be over. It's like a blink of an eye compared to eternity. Now back to Psalms 90, verse 7, and it reads, For we are consumed by thy anger, and by thy wrath are we troubled. That's sure how it was for those who tempted God ten times in the wilderness. But you see, if you are following God and doing things His way, sticking to His Word, His wrath isn't coming down on you. And He corrects those that He loves, like you see in Hebrews chapter 12. Praise God for it. But yeah, you'll be consumed if you want to go against God and tempt Him ten times. Verse 8. And of course, I don't just mean just you only sin ten times in your life. Of course, we all sin every day. There's going to be a time where in throughout the day when you're going to have not so righteous a thought or whatever. We're in the flesh. It's going to happen. But when you sin, repent. But when they were tempting him ten times in the wilderness, they were doubting God. They were murmuring against him. They did not have faith in him. You never want to do any of those things even once. Never doubt God. Never be unappreciative of him. Verse 8, Thou hast set our iniquities before thee, our secret sins in the light of thy countenance. That means that they come before his face. He sees it all. He knows all. There's no such thing as a secret with Almighty God. He knows everything. I mean, even, even little, like I said, even little unrighteous thoughts that you might have, God knows that. Don't get on some huge guilt trip. Just repent. But the point is, you can't hide anything from God. He knows every thought. But how much of a blessing is that when you are sincere and you're trying your best to serve God? He knows that. So then even when we do mess up, when there's always going to be times that we do, there's gonna, those times are going to come, not always, but there's going to come times that we mess up pretty bad sometimes. But God knows you're sincere. He knows you love Him. He knows you're trying. So just repent. And like it says in Isaiah chapter 43, verse 25, God says, I, I am He that blotteth out thy transgressions for mine own sake and will no more remember your sins. They are erased when you sincerely repent. Verse 9, For all our days are passed away in thy wrath. 
We spend our years as a tale that is told. If you're going against God, then you never have happiness. Your whole life is just like a sad song, just like a sad story that gets told. That's what your whole life is like if you don't serve Jesus Christ, if you don't believe in the Savior. Verse 10, that word tale is translated as mourning in Ezekiel chapter 2, verse 10. Verse 10, the days of our years are three score years and ten. Now a score is twenty. So three score, that's sixty, plus ten is seventy. So this is saying the days of our years are seventy years, and if by reason of strength they be four score, that's eighty years, yet is their strength labor and sorrow, for it is soon cut off, and we fly away. What's that mean? That means, once again, when your flesh body dies, your spirit flies away, as it puts it here. It means it returns to Almighty God. Your spirit doesn't stay in the ground. It returns to Almighty God when your flesh body dies. So that this is saying that most people are going to live maybe 70, maybe 80 years old if they have a whole lot of strength. But as you see here, as you get older and you get way up in age, like, then you see, as also you see in Ecclesiastes chapter 12, your body starts breaking down. I mean, teeth don't grind as good as they used to. You don't uh, see as good. You don't hear as good. And then just a little sound might wake you up. You're not sleeping as near as good through the night. Mentions all these things in Ecclesiastes chapter 12. So what a blessing it is to live a long life so you can serve God and bring as many people to Christ as possible. But just know that when you get up there in years, there's going to be some sorrow there. You're going to have some problems with your body physically. It's going to happen. But God is with you. Continue to serve Him. And you have an incorruptible body waiting for you. That perfect spiritual body that you read about in 1 Corinthians chapter 15. And that body is forever. Where there is no pain, no uh, handicap, physical or mental so we can handle 70, 80, or maybe a little longer years in the flesh. You can handle that when you're going to have a perfect body for all eternity. But life is so much better in the flesh if you serve God. There's no true happiness without God. And what a miserable life it would be without Him. Verse 11. Who knoweth the power of thine anger? Even according to thy fear, so is thy wrath. See, God's wrath is always righteous. We just mentioned God corrects those that He loves. So who can understand that? That when God did some, He brought some pretty serious wrath down sometimes. Might think about Sodom and Gomorrah. Well, hey, that lets you know you better not be going that way. Or it is not going to be good for you. And so, yeah, God does what He has to to get our attention but you better understand that it is always righteous, every single thing that God does. And if you want to doubt God and rebel against Him ten times, all in a row basically, it's not going to be good. But it doesn't matter what you've done in the past. If you repent sincerely, that sin is washed away like it never existed. That's the power of the cross. That's the power of the blood that was shed by our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Verse 12, So teach us to number our days, that we may apply our hearts unto wisdom. And they could really, really number their days back in the book of Numbers when God told them, 40 years in the wilderness, that generation's going to die. They're going to perish. So they literally knew how much longer they had. And, but this is saying, uh, teach us to, to, make, to make sure every single day we do our very best to serve Almighty God in the way that He taught us in His Word so that we can apply our hearts to wisdom so we can be pleasing to God and we can bring others to the truth. You can plant those seeds. Remember, make every day count in serving God. This time in the flesh is but a vapor. Like you see in it's either James chapter 4 or James chapter 5. And like you see there, you, sh you shouldn't just have the mindset that, oh, I'm going to do all this stuff for myself. No, you should have the mindset, I'm going to do this if it be God's will. And you always put God's will first. Verse 13, 
Return, O Lord, how long? And let it repent thee concerning thy servants. Moses calling out to God here, saying, Return to us your favor, Lord. He's saying, how, how long is it going to be that you're going to bring this wrath down? And its intercessory prayer is very powerful. And you see how powerful, how much weight Moses' intercessory prayer carried in Jeremiah chapter 15, about verse 1. So intercessory prayer is a very uh, powerful thing. And God hears, but you always want to remember, what is it? First John, I can't remember where it's at, maybe chapter 5. But it says, you pray in God's will. And that is absolutely important. But he's calling out to God here, asking for mercy. And God is so very merciful. Verse 14. Oh, satisfy us early with thy mercy, that we may rejoice and be glad all our days. And how blessed are you, no matter what point you are at in your life, if, if you have understanding of God's word, you are so incredibly blessed. And don't take that for granted. You make sure every day you apply that wisdom to your life. And uh, the, uh, how it says, oh, satisfy, it's even, that's even get said in a way like he's hungry for it. Lord, fill us with your mercy um, and do it early, he's asking for about that uh, with the, the hunger thing, how he words it. You remember Matthew chapter 5, verse 6, where it says, Blessed are they which do hunger and thirst after righteousness, for they shall be filled. Do you hunger and thirst after righteousness? Do you long for it? Or do you act like it's a chore to serve Almighty God? I promise you it is not a chore. God gives you so many blessings, so much happiness and wisdom. If you're willing to make time every day to study His Word, and if you're willing to apply what you read to your life, not just being a hearer, but you be a hearer and a doer, like you learn about in the book of James. Verse 15, Make us glad according to the days wherein thou hast afflicted us and the years wherein we have seen evil. They saw a whole lot of wrath come down from Almighty God those 40 years in the wilderness. I mentioned it before, 1 Corinthians chapter 10, verses about 1-11, through 11, and really go all the way to verse 14. You see even in verse 13 that nothing happens to you that's not common to many other people. Nothing happens to you that you can't handle, and God is always going to give you a way out. And sometimes things are just going to happen. That doesn't mean God did it. Remember, if you ever want to start blaming your problems on God, read Jeremiah chapter 23, verse 33 through 40. But also, if you want to go against God in the way of evil, then yeah, His wrath is going to come down. But like he's saying here, make us glad. He's saying, Lord, we, I know your wrath it had to come down. But he's saying, please, now turn that around into your blessings into the happiness that you will bring. And He does. Don't ever doubt that for one second. Verse 16. Let thy work appear unto thy servants, and thy glory unto their children. Uh, give us understanding of your word, Father, of your plan. Not just for us, but so we can share it to our children. And so they can share it with their children. And the truth can be passed down from generation to generation, as it always has and always will, all the way to the very end. So ask God for understanding of His plan. You know, James chapter 1, verse 5, it says, If any of you lack wisdom, ask God. And He will give it to you liberally. He will give it to you bountifully. One of the most important things you could ever know in your life about God's plan is to know that before we are gathered together to Jesus Christ is the deception of Satan as the false Christ. Do not be deceived. Verse 17. And let the beauty of the Lord our God be upon us. And establish thou the work of our hands upon us. Yea, the work of our hands, establish thou it. When was the last time that you asked God to help you to accomplish something for Him? Not just for your own selfish wants of the flesh, 
where moth and rust corrupts things of the world. But when's the last time you asked God, help me so I can do what I need to do for you to accomplish your plan, Father? And He will establish it. He will establish the work of your hands. Now to complete this study, I want to go read two verses in the book of Matthew. Just to add on to that a little bit. Matthew chapter 18, we're going to pick it up in verse 19. You see in verse 10 of this chapter that your angel beholds the face of God at any time. God even used that army of angels to protect those who serve Him. But let's go Matthew chapter 18, picking it up, verse 19. And it reads, Again I say unto you, that if two of you shall agree on earth as touching anything that they shall ask, it shall be done of them of my Father which is in heaven. If just two of you come together and you say, hey, we both feel led to do something for the Lord. Let's come together and let's ask God for His blessing so we can do His will. If you ask for that and you ask in His will, He is going to do, He will bless you beyond what you ever even thought was possible. He will bless you with things that words can't even describe. And even if it's just you, call out to God, ask Him to guide you to do His will. And if you study God's Word, if you do your very blessed best to serve God how He taught us to, your cup runs over. Verse 20 to complete. For where two or three are gathered together in my name, there am I in the midst of them. And He truly is. So remember, God's Word teaches us every aspect of life you could ever want. It teaches you how to be successful, how to be blessed, how to get wisdom. And if you're serving God, I mean, if you're working hard, don't ever forget 1 Timothy chapter 5, verse 8. It says, if you do not provide for yourself and your family, then you've denied the faith and are worse than an infidel. So you work hard, you provide for yourself, and you study God's Word. You get into His Word. He teaches you how to do anything that He could ever want you to do. He teaches you how to do it. And never forget 1 Corinthians chapter 12, how we are all part of that many-membered body of Christ. And God gives everyone different gifts. So ask God to guide you to use the gifts that He's given you to accomplish His purpose. And if you do it with a sincere heart, wanting to do His will, He will guide you every step of the way. And you will be so blessed. He will give you wisdom he will give you guidance in your life in whatever way that you need it. And you will truly be so blessed so you can serve Him and also you so you can help others. Never forget this time in the flesh is but a vapor. It's so short compared to Almighty God who has always been and always will be, who created the heaven and the earth and created everything. Our Father, and He loves us so much that He even sent His only begotten Son, Jesus Christ, to die on the cross for us and resurrect. Because God knows that we all sin, but He loves us so much that if you just repent, your sins are erased as if they never existed. So when you're going through a rough patch, remember this Psalms 90, this prayer of Moses, the man of God. Remember how short the time in the flesh, and you use every day to apply it to wisdom so you can serve Almighty God. You will be truly so blessed and so happy. Let's go to our Father's throne. Yahweh, Heavenly Father, we thank you so much for your word. In this place you've given us, we can teach your word. We just ask you to continue to give us understanding, not just for ourselves, but so we can share them with others. Thank you, and we love you so much, Father. In Yeshua, Jesus Christ's precious name, amen. Christian Church in Kokomo, Indiana by Pastor Jesse Sisk. God bless.